broadcasting to you from our North Catholic studios in Cranberry Township for our fifth episode of the year on our podcast on North Catholic Athletics. My name is Alex Brown. Alongside me today is Ryan Berry and Callie Martis as we are knee deep in the playoff race for all of our sports coming down to the wire as we start the month of February. We'll start with the North Catholic girls basketball team. Since we last talked, North Catholic did add another win to their season with a dominating win over Derry last Friday, which was a senior night matchup in which North Catholic just cleaned the Derry's clock. They're now 10-0 and in section on the year, 12-5 and overall. And they make it look easy. Then they notched another win against Greensburg-Salem, which would have been on Monday. And the 29th, 52-41 to 41 in that game. Another nice win for the Trojanettes, especially against one of the better teams in their section. But that section right now up to 101 straight wins for the Trojanettes in section play. That's dominance. Yeah, and you look at these games against Greensburg and Highlands. The first time North Catholic played Highlands, they beat them by 20. The second time, they beat them by 4. The first time the Trojanettes played Greensburg-Salem, they beat them... Pretty handily, 62-35. to 35. Recently, they beat them by 11. Obviously, these are the two other top teams in your section, but they're gaining ground on you. And you can look at that in a multitude of ways, like we're still winning, but the saying goes, and this is Alex's favorite saying, it's tough to beat a good team three times. Sure uh, so if they see these teams as the playoffs, they have to make sure they're on top of their game. And I'm sure that Coach Rotman and the players are all watching film because obviously you've played them twice. Greensburg and Highlands both made adjustments. Those adjustments helped them cut it closer. Now it's up to the Trojanettes to watching those games and seeing what those adjustments were and how you're going to adjust to those adjustments. And I think it's still, at this point in the season, finding more scoring inside. They're relying, and we've talked about this on every broadcast, so much on the three. And when they're hitting it, it's great. They can go on big runs, and that's why they have quarters where they can go on huge runs. Brady Wayne and Elena Rocco seem to make, ne- like sometimes never miss. But it's also times where they seem to never make a shot. And when that happens, there's not enough inside scoring right now to carry the Trojanettes against really good teams. And if they go cold against Blackhawk, I don't know how. Like It happened in the state game last year. They couldn't make a shot from three, and they couldn't get quite enough scoring inside. And Blackhawk ended up pulling that victory out after North Catholic beat them pretty handily in the Whitfield Championship. So when North Catholic can't score from three, it's going to be tough for them to win against Blackhawk. But they're working on it, and you never know. Maybe they'll be really good from three in those games, so they won't even have to worry about that. But that's the one problem, because it's not many. It's not many problems with this team no. when you're 10-0 in conference. But that's the one problem I would point out, and I'm sure that's a, an area that's being focused on by Coach Rotman and the team. I think you addressed that perfectly, and that's something, Callie, that obviously needs to be worked on and fine-tuned as we head into the playoffs. Is that more of a thing that they're going to have to work on in – practice in terms of systems or is that just something that they're going to have to concentrate more on in the moment of the game well Alex I mean practice makes perfect so it's definitely something you want to be working on in practice as well as games too specifically we saw in the Kennedy Catholic game that we broadcast that North Catholic was forced the outside practically the whole game and really had trouble making a lot of threes which resulted in the loss 52-42 so if you're North Catholic you're really trying to figure out a way to get inside other teams defense crash the hoop, get inside the arc, and really get those shots because I think it'll help them a lot going into the playoffs to get more opportunities, especially on offense. Sarah Lowry, basically their quarterback going up on offense, has really done a great job with ball distribution this year. The Trojan Nets get so many assists over the course of a game, and even over the course of a half, They, st- but they're at best – when they have strong first and third quarters, those I think those are the, that's the key to their success is having those strong first and third quarters to be able to not only establish a lead but to be able to maintain that coming out of the half. And Coach Rotman, Ryan, when there is lulls, she does a great job being able to calm down the team by calling a timeout and getting them back in the right direction. Yeah, and luckily in conference, she doesn't seem to have to do that that much. Yes, uh, but. In some of those non-conference games against Kennedy Catholic, you look in the fourth quarter there, that North Catholic was on eight or something, and they cut it to two. They obviously didn't go on to win that game, but they had called a timeout and came out of that timeout with a new plan. And obviously she's one of the most winning, winningest coaches in all of – I don't even know what – you probably know better than she's, me. She's coming up on 550 wins. I don't know where that ranks, but it's got to be it's high. close to the top. 
and she's got that for a reason. And, and that reason is she knows how to coach. She's a great coach. I mean, I mean, you can be. I mean, there's a lot of good coaches, but sometimes it's just another level. Those in-game adjustments of where the differences are made, and and that's where Coach Rotman has excelled so much. And the players on this team, Callie, and she'll tell you first off as soon as you mention anything to Coach Rotman about her success, she'll say it's all the players. And the players, um, over the last 101 section games, no matter who they're against, they've won every one of them. And you're playing teams like Derry. You're playing teams like Valley. Valley's terrible. Valley beat Derry. Uh, Valley lost to Derry. 48 to 2 in a game. An actual game, 48 to 2. And then we beat Derry 69 to 12. So it's just the, the disparity in talent between the teams and the sections uh, incredible. But yet North Catholic is still ready to play every single game. I mean, yeah, for sure, Alex. I talked to Coach Rotman a few games ago, and she said they keep that motivation. That's what they do really well. Um, when they were beating Derry uh, by a lot, obviously, you just said the score was. Huge gap. 69 but, to 12. Yeah. But um, they keep that motivation, and they go out every game, every quarter, like they're losing. That's how they play. They play so hard, and they really take down their opponents, which is a big part of why they're 10-0 in conference. And they will look to continue that in their games. Uh, they play Valley um, this Thursday the 1st, Thursday the 1st of February at North Catholic High School. And then they have a road um, matchup against uh, Pine Richland. Pine Richland coming up as well in a non-conference uh, matchup, which is great because North, North Catholic does a fantastic job of trying to balance out their schedules over the course of the year by sprinkling in some tough non-conference opponents like they did with Greensburg um, Central Catholic, like they did with Kennedy Catholic, and now Pine Richland, they'll play Oakland at the end of the year as well in a big matchup at Oakland Catholic which will be something pretty exciting to do before you head into the playoffs, like they did last year. And they beat Oakland Catholic. We were there for that game. Um, that was the, the, the Don Graham Classic for that game. And North Catholic played Central Catholic for the boys and then Oakland Catholic for the girls. Both teams won. And that was a great day for basketball and a great day to be a North Catholic fan. And they look to continue that success. It's always a great day to be a North Catholic fan. And the teams here prove it. Um, and for the North Catholic boys basketball team, they lost to Lincoln Park in a really a tough back and forth matchup, ninety five to seventy nine. But Ryan, it looked different. It did, and I don't know if it's because they were scoring better. And I think it's has more to do with the start. The start of that game was significantly better than it was at PPG Paints Arena. They came out inspired basically it was a whole new dynamic it seemed with the rotations five in five out Brady Kazara comes in gets eight points there's maybe even nine points in the first quarter uh and he hit a free throw to give North the lead to go in the second quarter the energy that they play with getting the lane it it shocked Lincoln Park they weren't expecting it and Lincoln Park obviously adjusted they went to a zone and defended the inside much better North Catholic couldn't make enough, enough shots from three to, to keep it close towards the end but they were in that game because of the way they started. They attacked the hoop. They weren't scared. They looked at a team that was confident, and they played like basically they had nothing to lose, which they really didn't. I mean, they're not expected to win that game, and they really, towards the end of that second quarter, if they could have kept that around a one-score game, it was two points, and I believe three minutes to go in the second quarter, it expanded to 10 for Lincoln Park at halftime. If that's kept a two-point game, I don't see any reason why North Catholic couldn't have made a run there towards the end to take the game. Callie, it was a fast-paced game. North Catholic, as Ryan mentioned, had those subs almost a full five on, five off at every two minutes. That energy was good, but it wasn't enough to tire out Lincoln Park in that game. For, play Lincoln Park, you really have to be firing on all cylinders if you want to win that game. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, Lincoln Park's a tough team. They're quick. They have the height. So North Catholic really needs uh, – needed to get out there. They needed um, to get some fresh bodies out on the court to stay in the game. They did a good job of that in the uh, first half. But like Ryan said, they just kind of fell apart after that. Um, in the first half, I think Lincoln Park went up by a good like seven, eight points. And from then, North Catholic kind of just fell apart after that. But I thought it was a good showing. I mean, North Catholic um, played really well in the first half. They kept Lincoln Park on their toes. Um, they just couldn't carry it out the rest of the game. And for North Catholic moving forward, they played Hopewell this past 
um, Tuesday, the 30th, and they beat them 90 to 30, 60 point win. They were down 10 to 5 in the first quarter, went on a 49 to 7 run um, to close out the half just about, and they did a remarkable job the rest of that game just putting on the points, and they did the same thing as they did against Lincoln Park with the changes. So they did that same f system where five guys come off, five go guys go on, and they rotated that over the course of a game. I think that's going to be their new system moving forward, and it's interesting. It's interesting because I think at the beginning of games, it's, not, it's going to take a little bit for them to get used to it. At the beginning of games, that's going to be where North Catholic is going to struggle. Because Hopewell, at the beginning of that game, was ready to go. They had the energy, and they were able to counter North Catholics subbing by having consistent play going up and down maybe the Maybe that's something they changed now, because it worked well against Lincoln maybe. Park. They maybe wanted to see it in another game to see but if they But if you look could... at that score, though, it's it seems like... Do they continue? I wasn't there. Did they continue that the rest of the game they after did. that? They did. They did, just about. I mean, once, about the time they got in the fourth quarter, even Coach Rocco was sitting down on the bench. I've never seen Coach Rocco ever during a boys' basketball game sit down on the bench. And he he was, like, rubbing his hands through his hair, like he was down by 60. But you could tell he was more relaxed. Yeah. And they, I think they feel confident with that system because they know they have the depth. They do. They have, they have solid varsity players up and down that lineup. And – Everyone stepped up in a big way, even again last night. So I think that's what they're going to be doing moving forward. And it's, it, maybe the first quarters won't be so great, but once you have that pace being continued throughout the entire game, going hard for two minutes because you know you're going off for two minutes, I think that's interesting. It's like almost like a hockey shift, Ryan, but except the other team is having their first line out there the entire time. Yep. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Try to wear them down, and I'm sure that's something that they're going to keep working on and, and hoping to get better at because obviously they just started at Against Lincoln Park, I assume that was the first time they did it. Yes, it was. And they they said they knew that just a couple minutes before the game started, when they went in the locker room, it was on the board. And then they said, that's what we're going with in this game. And the coaching staff, I think, made the right decision because it really did keep them in that Lincoln Park game, especially in the first half. But it, those final two minutes of this first half killed the Trojans. They killed them. Went on a 12-0 run to Lincoln Park, put them down by 10 and a half, and then they were never able to come back because in the second half, they played about even basketball for most of it until you get to the end. You get have the fouls at the end, and Lincoln Park put down the free throws. So they, they even made it, North Catholic made it a, um, a single-digit game for a couple minutes in that second half, but it's just not enough. You just can't have those lulls against, against Lincoln Park, and but you're going to. Can North Catholic have that kind of a push back against them in a game in the future? We'll find out because the, the next time these two teams can meet, we'll be in the Whippy Old playoffs. And Uniontown lost to Bell Vernon um, just last night on the 30th of January, and that's a big loss in one of the other sections in 4A. So that, that could topple. Uniontown from that top spot over time as that was their first loss in section play. And Uniontown has now lost two games in the last two weeks. So there's going to be some movement in terms of the seeding, Ryan. In the last couple games for North Catholic, they're playing their section opponents, Central Valley Blackhawk and Beaver Area. Then they finish with Central Catholic. Does that Central Catholic game bear extra significance for you if you were on that selection committee? You always want to see how a team finishes. How is Central Catholic doing in... In 6A. Well, 6A is having a down year. 6A overall that's is having true. a down year. That's true. That's happened the past couple of years because I think Lincoln Park would have been any of the champions last year. Absolutely. Uh, maybe the year before Newcastle would have won, but I'm not, I'm not sure. But the thing with Central Catholic this year, this year they're, they are leading their section currently, 6-1 and one in conference play. In NA, yeah, NA has a, had, had a down year too. So, yes. I mean, it's hard to judge. So it's going to be in, let's, How has Central Catholic done out of conference? They're eleven and seven overall, six and one in conference. So that means outside of their own conference, they are five and six on the season. So that'd be a losing record. But some of those teams, even North Catholics, they they go, boys and girls team, they go out and they play these tough opponents. So that who knows? Yeah, if that's it, the best it's going to be indicator. interesting. And I think it's something they definitely look at. Even though six A is having a, another down year, it's still a six A win, and it's still beating a six A team that is first in their section. So you don't want to lose it. Because that could hurt you. But if you win it, it's either going to keep you at the same spot or maybe bump you up a spot uh, a spot or two. And those defensive and offensive matchups, especially this will be a interesting game for it against Central Catholic when that comes up in two weeks. 
Central Catholic, they're, aver- they're averaging giving up about 48 points per game. Cali North Catholic scoring 74 points per game. That's going to be a battle of the wills. North Catholic's offense this this year has been pretty impressive and consistent over the course of the season. What are the best parts of their offense? Why is it so successful? Well, Alex, the Trojans are really good at moving the ball. They find those open lanes, and they take those shots. Um, they're not afraid to be too aggressive, and North Catholic also – Um, with some big players on their team for sure you have a lot of young talent in the team as well you have all the star sophomores you have Jason Fredericks you have Jude Rotman you have Wills Contel all um, contributing to the team but then you have your leaders as well you have Max Hurry, Nick Larson, um, Jason Sickett, Brady Coziera they it's just a perfect um, it's a good balance yeah balance exactly um, of the young talent and the leaders, the veterans on the team, and I think that's what really helps their offense. They, Like I said, they pass well, they find those open lanes, and they take those shots. Right. How about the speed from the younger guys on this team? I look at the sophomore class. Yeah. Callie just mentioned them. Consul, you have um, Fredericks, and Rotman. These guys really are able to put in big minutes for this team. Yeah, you could, you could tell that. Fredericks was going to have a big year just by the way he yes. filled in last year off the bench. You saw Rahman in some of those blowout games last year where he came in off the bench and made like three threes or four threes. Like, you were like, who is, who is this kid? And, and you could tell he was going to be a three point specialist, and he is. And that's, that's a role that he's continuing to fill and continue to get better at. And then Wills is another guy that, that's really quick and shifty. And he can shoot the three. He's trying to find that consistency right now. Because when he hits one, he can hit a lot. And same with Jude. And Yes. They seem to be similar where it's... You'd like to have them get really hot every game. But it's almost like you'd rather have them go 35% each game to yes. make sure they're at least making a couple threes per game. Because some games they go 0 4 whatever yes and you'd rather have them make a couple but some games will go six for seven or five for five and you're like okay this is awesome but uh but it's almost like you'd like to have them divvy it up a little bit more but i mean that's how it goes in basketball you're either hot or you're or you're cold in and they're trying to find that nice little medium right basketball now. might be the sport where momentum is the keenest in the play throughout the entire game because you have quarters you have runs you have halves you have yeah all that momentum just, can shift so yes. fast because you get five timeouts. There's four or there's three technically three quarter breaks. You have ten minute and a half yes. time. You have uh, and it's not even five timeouts per team. It's or it's ten timeouts total. Yes. So you can have that many timeouts and I don't know how how basketball players do because hockey there's one timeout. Obviously there's there's whistles and stuff, but there's the same thing in basketball. In basketball the last two minutes of the game is like a, an hour like in hockey it takes forever. last minute unless there's a stoppage and a timeout you, you go the whole way and it's so it's different and, it, and it's hard to like but it, you have to like mentally stay in it the whole time because it can be hard to and especially in the last quarter to keep that momentum and your your rhythm going when you're stopping so much and rye one of those players that has a rhythm to his game at a constant level is Max Hurry, and Max Hurry's had a fantastic season for the Trojans, averaging well over 20 points per game, scoring it as an impact and a presence to him every time he steps out on that court. He just committed over the weekend to Coker University in, out of South Carolina, a great private institution in the Palamento State, and it'll be a great spot for him moving forward. And for more on that, here is our interview with Max Hurry. And we're with senior varsity basketball star Max Hurry. Max, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your commitment to Coker University. What were some of the factors that went into you making that decision? Um, I had a great relationship with the head coach. I think he really believes in me, and I think this is his first year at the university, so I believe that we can build our way up to becoming a top 25 team in the next couple of years. And I also like the way uh, we play, really the same as North Catholic, really like high tempo. They're fourth in the country in uh, points per game, I think at 99.6. And they run that press, which is similar to ours, which I like playing. And speaking of that press, against Lincoln Park, you guys seem to come out playing fast. Mm-hmm. And it was about the same point, point margin and difference between this game and the, when you played them earlier in the season, but it felt like you guys played better. Do you feel that? And what are you, uh, some of the things you need to improve Yeah, on? we played a lot better, I think uh, – through the first three quarters, it was about a nine-point gap. Mm-hmm. And I think they just they went on a run towards the end of the game, which helps. But uh, I think we played them a lot closer and a lot better. And 
I think them starting in man and switching to zone, I think that showed that our offensively we were really good, but defensively and on the rebounding side, I think if we just tighten that up, we, we could be even closer. And during that Lincoln Park game, you guys really worked in the five-man rotation. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, it's our first time doing it, so uh, we'll see how that goes uh, throughout the season, when the uh, end of the regular season and the playoffs. But hopefully it's good. And, uh, I mean, it seemed to work against Lincoln Park, so hopefully that can translate to other teams. So will you continue this, you think, the rest of the season? Uh, I think for now we're going to we're gonna try doing it. For now, and we'll see what happens. In terms of endurance, do you feel like that, that helps the team going hard for two minutes and then coming off for maybe four minutes? And just that transition ebb and flow throughout those – you rotate those 12 guys. I think so, yeah. I think um, just having everyone fresh with the way we play, with the press and high-flowing high offense, I think that really helps. Just having guys ready to go and not tired when they're shooting and defensively and rebounding-wise, I think. And with the way it's kind of like situated where we have the same group of guys where – if when some when someone's subbing, it's like the same person, like a point guard, shooting guard, or guy who to rebound, guy to run the floor. I think it's all it's a similar group of guys. So, what do you say are the main strengths of the team this season? Obviously, you, you lost some from last some, some mm -hmm. players from last year. Do you have a different identity in this team, or what would you say? I think this team's identity. I think we're I think we've we're a higher flowing offense this year. I think uh, we we try to shoot a lot more. Because, again, last year and towards the end of the playoffs, I think we our points went kind of down, which I don't, I don't think that was good. But uh, I think we're higher-flowing offense, which uh, can lead to more points given up because they're going to get more possessions and we're going to try to do more traps and all kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think the main difference is our high-flowing offense. But for the most part, I think we're the same. Would you say we rely a little bit more on the three, or is that kind of just how it went at the beginning of the year and now you're trying to get – I think we rely a lot on the three, but I think we're finding this like we're finding out more that we're shooting more mid ranges and layups mm -hmm. than last year. But I think we do shoot a lot of threes. And you talk about that high powered offense. Mm -hmm. um, how have some of the underclassmen and juniors um, step up this season? Yeah, they've all stepped up. I think uh, a bunch of the the juniors. I mean, it's a it's a pretty different group from last year. I think we. Graduated three seniors in the starting lineup, and all the juniors and sophomores, like Fredericks, Jude, Wills, and then all the juniors like Owen, Joe. I don't want to leave anyone out. Eli, um, am I forget? <laughs> feel bad if I'm I, forgetting someone. I think, I think you're right on it. I think I'm right, right on. It. Okay. Did you say Owen? Did you say Owen in there? I did say yeah, Owen. Yeah, oh, yeah. I th I think all those guys stepped up perfectly. I think it's it took some time, like some others, the get ready uh, better than others, but I think right now everyone's in that in the mood. Is that what's going to carry, in terms of the differences between this year's team and last year's team, is that depth the biggest difference between last year's team and this year's team? Or is it something else that's really going to be able to carry out differently into the playoffs than it did last season? I think uh, we do have a lot more depth this year, and that could be a strength for one of ours, uh, especially with the five and five out. So I, th I think that could be one of the strengths this year because last year, if I remember, against in the Whitfield Finals, we only played about seven people with Owen and Nick coming off the bench. But this year we have ten guys who I think who are all evenly as good, and, and they play their roles really perfectly. So I think that could help us in the playoffs. All right, Max, that's all we got for you. Thank yeah. you for your time, and good luck the rest Thank of the season. Thank you, guys. And you just heard from Max Hurry, North Catholic star senior point guard on the North Catholic basketball team as they look to continue their success this season here in the weeks to come as we're coming down to the end of their regular season. And another team that's coming down to the end of their regular season with just three games remaining as of this point here at 2.23 p.m. on February the 1st. It would be the North Catholic hockey team, Cali. They are 12-4-1 in the year through 17 games. That's good enough to put them right now at the fifth seed in the Varsity A Gold Division. And Cali, it's, it's, with a win tonight they, against Greensburg Salem, they would clinch the playoff berth. It, they're, but that division is so tight right now that they could really feasibly move up to the second spot. Yeah, Alex, for sure. I mean, it's really tight. I mean, you have that um, 
big divide between the top six teams and the bottom six teams after you look um, behind Greensburg-Salem. So North Catholic with a big chance um, to get that playoff berth tonight against Greensburg-Salem, and that will really put them up there with um, Shaler, Indiana, Mars, and Quaker Valley, which is which are all really skilled teams, and that will be um, definitely some exciting playoff matchups to come. North Catholic has two of the top ten point getters in single A this year, um, junior Becca Dunn and senior Ryan Berry. Both have had exceptional seasons. But over the last, I would say, eight to ten games, we've started to see a resurgence of some of their depth scoring, some of their second and third line players really stepping up and scoring. And on defense, we've even seen some defensemen chip in and scoring over the last stretch, which has really been positive for the North Catholic team. And they had a big win against Indiana last week, 4 nothing after the senior night loss to Mars. And now they're going back on the road tonight to play Greensburg-Salem. But that depth scoring has really been critical to their run. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, depth was kind of a thing North Catholic was struggling with to start the beginning of the season. But then North Catholic added three players. You have Anthony Neely um, and Nuru Baikin, who are both sophomores and made a big impact. You add senior Carmen D'Ambrosio to the mix, who yes. has been um, a huge part of the Absolutely. team these past few games. He's been putting shots in on net. He's been scoring. He's been doing really well. Um, for the Trojans. So I think um, those three were huge additions for the team as far as depth goes because we look at North Catholic scoring at the beginning of the season. They didn't have a lot of it. Nope. But now they've really gotten their groove going. They went on that seven-game win streak there um, from December 5th to January 16th, and then that uh, loss to Mars ended it. But um, North Catholic has really been um, scoring more offensively and has really um, started to develop that chemistry line by line. They sure have, Kelly. They've won 10 of their last 12, dating back into the beginning of November. And a lot of that is based on, as we as what we were talking about with the depth scoring, but also the goaltending has been exceptional. Why Cleveland and Connor Reset have been remarkable this season, and why Cleveland had the shutout against Indiana last week, and it was in the All-Star game this past weekend. But both of the North Catholics' goaltenders this season have really been stellar in big moments. Oh, yeah. I mean... Both Wyatt Cleveland and Connor Reset have put up um, great save percentage. Connor Reset, 906 save percentage. Wyatt Cleveland, 901 save percentage. They've been really solid in net, and that helps too because North Catholic sometimes, um, like we said, I mentioned before in broadcast, they're not so strong in the neutral zone. There's a lot of turnovers there, which creates rushes for the other teams, but then you have those go good goaltenders behind you to back you up on those plays, and both of them have really shown that throughout the season. Now, the North Catholic power play is not something that they are certainly proud of this season. 11.5% of the year, they're 6 of 52 on the season. It's 22nd in single way, which is amazing to me that it's even that high out of the 24 teams. But despite that, despite that, despite them not playing great hockey on the power play, they are still winning a lot of games. One won 10 of their last 12. They've scored two power play goals, I believe, this calendar year. And those would be one against Kiski and one against Meadville. But other than that, even this calendar year, they have not been successful on the power play. There's a prescription that they could fulfill in the next three games of the season and leading into the playoffs that would fix it. What would you prescribe for this power play? Well, Alex, I just think North Catholic needs better rotation on the power play. There's a lot of standing still out high, and if North Catholic gets that rotation, they'll start uh, moving the other team's defense around. They'll start getting those open lanes. North Catholic often likes to dump it in and keep it along the boards and um, get those shots from below the circles, but those shots are really some weird angles. You need to get yes. up high for sure, getting those high slot areas, getting the dirty um, areas right in front of the net. So I say if North Catholic works on their rotation on the power play and a little bit of formation as well, um, they'll be good to go. But if you can't score on the power play, you're going to have to be good five on five, which North Catholic has um, started to prove really as we uh, got into the season more that five on five is definitely where they're at their best. North Catholic has four shorthanded goals this season, and they have six power play goals. And whenever the shorthanded goals are getting close to the amount of goals you have on the power play, that's probably not a good sign. But as you said, they've been excellent five on five this season. I think they would always prefer to be five on five this season. And especially the starts they've been having recently too, Kelly. When they get the first goal, they are very tough to beat in their games that they're playing. And the first period has been something they've worked on a lot in those last 12 games that they've gone 10 and two in. Because in the beginning of the year, the first period goal scoring was non-existent. 
and now they've really gotten a groove when it comes to, to being able to generate a quick start. Yeah, I mean, first period play has gotten a lot better. North Catholic, though, overall still has 17 goals scored in the first period throughout the whole season. Um, really, the second period has been their best. Um, the second period is when they um, really come out. They have 34 goals on the season in the second period, so I'd say that has been their best period all season. Along with the third period, too, not too bad either, 29 goals um, over the course of the season so far. But um, North Catholic, like you said, Alex, getting much better at the start of games. They're coming out faster. They're coming out harder, um, getting ready to play in the first period I'm not even concerned about the power play for them moving forward I know it's it's something that it's interesting to look at and especially on a team that doesn't have many weaknesses it's definitely something to, to, to definitely to focus some attention on but overall this team can survive without a great power play and they're always going to want it to improve it and to tweak it but look at where they're at now that but that power play if they were able to get it to 20 percent instead of 11.5 where it's at right now Five goals. That would be a five-goal difference, just about. And those five goals, look at their games that they played so far against Mars. They had opportunities, and they just weren't able to get them done. And Mars not a very heavily penalized team, but anytime you give an opportunity against them, it would be great to convert. But in those close games, especially when we start getting into the playoffs, those momentum changers – are key to winning and making a run in the playoffs. So while I'm not overly concerned about that power play, it'd be great if it could be improved. But this team has the legs, Callie, to be a championship contender. They have the talent. They have the drive. This is the best group that they've had since I've been here in the last four years. This is the best team that they've had. And I think they know it. I think the, the seniors oh, yeah. on this team know it in particular. And I, this this year is their year to succeed. And the pressure that comes with that, it, it might weigh on them, but it's good. It's a good pressure to have because the expectation is there, and that should follow with belief. Oh, yeah, Alex. I mean, there's no doubt North Catholic has all the potential um, to make it through the playoffs to get that championship because they just have such a good team this year. They have all the components. Now it's just a matter of putting everything together. Like you mentioned before, the power play, I mean, it's concerning, but not too concerning. North Catholic has proven that they can win without the power play for yes. sure. Um, I mean, like you said, if they add maybe five more goals on the power play, imagine how good North Catholic will be able to beat then. Um, but North Catholic, no doubt, um, has a good chance here in the playoffs. And we are here with Connor Berry, member of the North Catholic hockey team. So, Connor, what would you say is the biggest strength of your team? I think going into this year, definitely the ability to roll three solid lines that can compete with each team's first line. I think that's definitely our improvement going into this year, whereas last year we are a little slower on the back end, a little less capable of rolling three lines, which definitely can keep up with the speed of hopefully a deep playoff run. Where does your determination come from when you're on the ice? Because you play with such a fervent vigor for the game. For the game, you really do. But does that, where does that come from? Uh, I think I'm just, I'm too competitive. I don't, I don't like losing. So, I mean, if it's anything, like the other night, Ryan almost beat me in ping pong and I was mad. So, I just think, I don't like losing. So, if I can do anything to prevent that, I'm going to try it. And not only going off your determination, but what is the overall identity of the team? I think we're a team that we can score off the rush. We can score pretty goals. We can score not many power play goals, but we're getting better. <laughs> but yeah. we can score. Uh, question about the power play in a minute. Yeah, all right. We can score gritty goals. We can score when we need to score. And I think that's the best thing or the, the thing that I've really been happy to see over the course of the years we've been scoring and which is something we haven't had the past couple of years we've really had some really good scoring from all three lines and they've I don't know it's been really good production the scoring really has been remarkable this season it's been, it's been impressive on the power play we were just talking about the struggles of, about the power play um, do you have confidence that it can be improved or is the power play just not something that this team is going to be one of their fortes I think I mean obviously it needs to be improved, and I think 
going in with the mindset of saying, okay, scrap the power play because we're going to get chances. We're we're a fast, skilled team. You're that's gonna, gonna, we're going to draw penalties. You're going to draw penalties. You have. Like we saw in the Central game we had eight penalties just because we beat them on the outside. They couldn't exactly. keep up with us. So I think the biggest thing going into playoffs in the end of the season here with the big games coming up is we need the power play to start producing one goal games. It's the, I mean, it's like watching the Penguins. How many games will they have won in close games if they had a good power play? We don't want that to end our season and that be the same case. So, I mean, I think going into with the mindset of, we give up on the power play, that's a losing mindset, and that's not going to get you anywhere. And as you said, we're nearing the end of the regular season. You guys have three games left, two of which are against top six teams. How do you approach this? Um, just like any other game, it's just, we have to go out. We know if we play our game, we play the right way, stay out of the box, we're going to be able to beat any team in the league. So I think, I mean, yeah, the stakes are a lot higher now. I mean, end of the road, we need to, definitely need to beat Shaler and Greensburg coming up, end up the season with Montour, big game going to playoffs so I just think I just think that going into these we just have to play the right way uh and just play our game and we'll like the results what's the mindset of the group right now is it a lot of confidence heading into the playoffs 12 4 and 1 of the season yeah I think I mean obviously the loss to Mars kind of hurt and over the weekend to Central but I mean Central was a game just for fun obviously want to win that game never want to lose but and the way it happened in overtime but it's a good 3A team, so I think we have a lot of confidence. Indiana was a really good bounce-back game with a small roster, shortened roster, because we're missing a few guys. And to go up in there senior night and smoke them, we felt pretty good, especially losing on ours. So I think, yeah, we have confidence, but we're also not going into it super timid either. We're, we know we can play. We know we can win. We've lost to this Greensburg team on Thursday, so we really don't want to have the same result. All right. Well, thank you, Connor, and good luck the rest of the All season. Right, thanks, guys. And you just heard from Connor Berry, the North Catholic hockey team. And Callie and Ryan, that about does it for our podcast today. One more note, the wrestling team defeated both Lincoln Park and Neighborhood Academy on their senior night in dominating fashion. Gabe Paredes has had a fantastic season um, in his weight class, and he's, he's going to be a factor moving forward, I think, into whip heels. And Angelo Emilio has had a spectacular season as well. He's our Athlete of the Week this past week. And Marco Perry won in his senior night matchup as well. A great night for the North Catholic wrestling team, among other winners that they really stepped up and they've had a good season thus far. A big team for the wrestling team as well this season, but a great start, and a great, um, a great win to really encapsulate the highlights of their team on senior night. And that about does it. Yeah, it does. Uh, covered a lot, as you said. We thank Max and Connor for their time. And remember, we are your one-stop podcast for everything North Catholic Athletics. <laughs>